Welcome everybody to today's One Million by One Million Strategy Roundtable for Entrepreneurs. This is one of our free public roundtables, so entrepreneurs from all over the world are welcome. And uh, we have been doing this for a long time with the mission of helping a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars in annual revenue, thereby creating a trillion dollars in global GDP and 10 million jobs. So our entire justification for existence is to help you become successful. This is our 168th roundtable. Can you believe it? We've been doing this for a long, long, long time now. And uh, just before we start the formal presentations, I want to remind you that the SAP Startup Focus 1M1M Partnership uh, scholarship applications are due on April 19th. So if you're developing on the HANA platform, you need to make sure that your applications are in before the deadline, April 19th. The link for the application is on your screen. And um, if you need any help, you can ask in the public chat. Maureen or Irina will be able to help you. Uh, the recording will be available of this session. And if you're live tweeting the show, please use hashtag 1M1M. Our Twitter handles are at 1M by 1M and at Stromana. Um, our roundtable uh, recordings are available both on the blog and also on our YouTube channel, which is 1M1M Roundtables. That roundtable channel also has other goodies like cartoons and uh, 1M1M FAQ videos and so forth. Also, um, if you like what we are doing, please like us on our Facebook page. Maureen, could you please put the link of the URL of the Facebook page on the um, on the public chat so people can uh, take a look at it and hopefully like us. Um, we will be doing the formal presentations first, three of them, and then we're going to let you dial into the call and talk to us. Any of you can pretty much dial in by dialing 650-479-3208, access code 665-117712. Just give us a heads up in public chat that you are dialing in that we call you, we roll call you. We're going to start today with John Dussel and Satish Vishwanathan. Collectively is the company. Uh, Satish, I believe, is presenting. So, Satish, go ahead. Yep. Uh, our company name is uh, Collectively. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, our aim, our goal is uh, you know, simplifying uh, social sharing, as you see on this slide. There are plenty of ways to share online. Even this presentation started with uh, all the social channels where you could like or participate and give feedback and stuff. So our company is, uh, you know, aiming at solving and remembering uh, and organizing some of this stuff for you, not only for you and your friends, to come back to it later on. So we have, you know, a very detailed slide deck. So I'll be going through very quickly. You could. Uh, Email me if you want to look at this uh, spec. This is uh, my co-founder, uh, John, and some of our advisors. And the next slide, please. Um, as I kind of explained, uh, we are trying to figure out the most intuitive way to collect, share, and the discover the best uh, of the web within your own circles or within your collections, what we call. And it, we are trying to build the most intuitive way so that you could remember what you liked and what you didn't like, so that you could also share that stuff easily in a, you know, not a real-time format, but a, you know, right-time format with your circles later on. Uh, as I can describe, there are many uh, social platforms and sharing techniques available, but lots of them are very real-time and unorganized. So you cannot go back to them, you cannot bookmark them, and uh, there are plenty of other things wrong so which we are trying to fix. And this is our, you know, user uh, personas that we, you know, talk about. There's uh, mainly it's uh, between, you know, uh, 18 and 29. And we think a lot of share, you know, people who share stuff in different platforms and, uh, you know, various type of content, you know, things to do, things to see, things to buy, things to watch, and things to listen. And those are all fragmented, so we are trying to make sure that there is a single place to go and see, you know, who is sharing and what are they saying about, you know, these various uh, type of things. 
So there are three phases, uh, you know, stuff. Um, you could, uh, you know, continue to use your existing channels, uh, or we also have, like, you know, P Pinterest, a bookmarklet or, book, you know, a button on browser where you could collect stuff either from the web or from the mobile, and also you, you can collect stuff from your existing social networks. So we have uh, two other channels that we are covering up, apart from the existing channels. And you could also, you know, discover stuff from our main uh, website where you could browse through stuff in terms of, in, in various collections in terms of, like I said, things to do in terms of travel, uh, things to watch, you know, YouTube and, you know, fashion, sports and stuff. So these are curated for you uh, from your social channels. And so we know we can present you in terms of personalized and related uh, content. Um, this is uh, diving into one of the collections that we showed in the previous uh, page. And this is one of the screenshots of what it, it would look like on a mobile stuff where you could uh, collect content. Uh, this is kind of diving into some of the use cases that I kind of talked about in the personas where you know one of your friends that uh, you know finds good videos or one of your friends, uh, friends finds good, uh, you know, fashion stuff or wine recommendations so that you could, uh, you know, technically like a Twitter, follow them and see their, you know, recommendations. So this is our user acquisition uh, strategy. We want to go towards uh, small niche markets and uh, in leverage the networking effects and go and, um, you know, use uh, social uh, uh, referrals to, you know, use the variety factor and go bigger in terms of our user acquisition funnel. And what is the business here? The business model is uh, that, you know, there are plenty of ways the uh, user would purchase any product uh, if friends recommends it, right? There's better chance of purchasing a product. So we are trying to curate the content and have a in a central place so that we um, can get a referral bonus uh, for it's things to buy. business model, basically. Yes. Okay. Can you go to the next? Yeah, so here you know, kind of we talked about, you know, some of the stuff is na naturally monetizable. So uh, we can take you, you know, if you like that, you know, you like cameras or shopping for cameras, and we can show you that your friend already purchased this and commented on it, and, uh, you know, we could make money on advertising or take you to that web store with our affiliate code. So that's kind of the monetizable model. And as you see, there's plenty of uh, players in this space, uh, you know, including big, big, bigger guys like Pinterest and Reddit and Tumblr and even including Facebook and Twitter where they, you know, have stuff for you in showing the ads and what you're sharing and showing related stuff. So if you look at this, um, you know, this spectrum, Pinterest is the one that is following that affiliate fee business model. And they're kind of biased towards image-oriented products, right? Products that have visual merchandising going on. Yep. Reddit is a content curation uh, service. Reddit is not monetizable by affiliate fees. Yep, I think we are not only focusing on uh, content. That's why we have, you know, we've been calling collections. So. Uh, to get a lot of users, you, we don't want to just limit it to just products, but uh, also news and other categories. So we hope that uh, they come to our website for various things, not only for products, but uh, you know, for you know, saving stuff, so that they naturally are able to collect stuff, which uh, I talked about in the. Uh, I will talk about in the later slides where. People have been using stuff like emails and bookmarklets to store and, um, you know, saving and uh, sharing stuff is very fragmented. So we want to solve that problem via, you know, while solving that problem, we would have much more access to people's uh, preferences and people's, uh, you know, buying patterns and be able to be in, in that, you know, mold. 
I'm not completely sold on your idea because, I, frankly, as a user, I yep. find there is too many already. And yeah, I've like what comes to your mind? Of, according to your segmentation, I'm not your, in your target audience. You're looking for younger people who spend their lives online and have nothing better to do, it seems. Yep, uh, because they are the ones that, uh, you know, spend a lot more uh, time on various networks and wants to share a lot of the things and wants to see what their friends are doing and where they're going and, and stuff. So I think we want to capitalize on that audience first because we can't focus everybody at the same time. So. No, no, not only that, I, there, there's another question is that how much are they spending? This audience, that, that audience that you've picked is also has a lot lower budget. If your entire but, monetization hypothesis is in getting a percentage of their purchases, what is, I mean, you're going to need, you know, many, many millions of customers or in, uh, users to get to any reasonable revenue. And then there's this question is how do you get there? What kind of runway do you have? Do you have... Uh, that's what resources are you working with financially? Yes, I think uh, we have, you know, at least a few months runway because we're working with uh, some of the grad students at uh, uh, Philadelphia, but, you know, the resources are not, uh, you know, endless. So that's one of the things we are constantly looking. Should we be uh, pivoting? You know, are we targeting the right audience? Should we be looking at some you know, B2C solutions where, you know, we kind of use some of the stuff that we built to help the companies in having, you know, maybe coming up with social analytics or stuff like that because we pull social networks and grab some of the content and we have, uh, you know, trending stuff and popular stuff that we figure out in terms of what's being shared. So those are the In what you're describing here, the business that you're describing here, unless yep. you, you – Somehow, either, uh, somehow or the other, self-finance to huge amounts of traction, no one's going to fund this business. Okay. It's a crowded category. Yep. So if, you, if one of your assumptions is that some angel investor is going to fund you and, and give you the runway to get to millions of users, and unless there are many, millions of users, the VCs are not going to fund this either, then yep. you have a chicken and egg problem. Yep. If you so look you at all the that, that have gone from, you know, gone to huge amounts of traction, they basically self-finance that traction period. Quora yeah. is a good example, right? Yeah. Quora is uh, the founder is the CTO of Facebook. He is sitting on $400 million plus of his own money, of which he wrote a $20 million check to start Quora, and then he brought yeah. in some investors. Yeah. So that is a heavily funded company that does not monetize at all, but they yep. are very deep pockets with which to build that traction. Yep. You don't have that deep pocket, it sounds like. Nope, we don't. So then I just don't see how you can do this business. You're going so to what? Go ahead. So, uh, so are there any ways of, um, you know, pivoting or, you know, what kind of I just, you know, kind of described? Is there any, you know, like some of the examples are people are doing some interesting stuff in this area. Like that's why I want to, you know, constantly talking with my co-founder say we need to go on a vertical. I don't know whether you heard of apps like House where it's all about, you know, remodeling and idea books and stuff where it's more curation and going vertical, like you, you know, you also look but at. I think the stuff. real issue is here whether if you want to go B to C, even yep. if you go vertical B to C, it will still be a matter of getting millions of users. Yep. And that's unless you can get millions of users, it's not going to work. Okay, so your thing is that either uh, get funding and get ramp so that we have that in you know, a large runway. But uh, I'm saying think about I think. If you have some deep pockets in your on your team or in your you know friends and family who are willing to write those kinds of checks, this is not fundable. The current state of this business is not fundable by professional investors. Like I cannot get this deal funded. 
Okay. If you decided that you were going to join 1M1M and you want me to help you get funding, I cannot get this deal funded. It is not in a fundable state. Okay. Thank you. That's a good at least uh, things to think about. And I'll also uh, talk with my co-founder and see if they have any. I would appreciate if you have a, you know, you know, at least a few minutes chat later on or email. At least that would help. Uh, so I can help you if you join the program. I cannot really spend unlimited amounts of time with you unless you're part of the program. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is the only place where I'm going to spend time with you, and I'm giving you some feedback. So if you're trying to do this in a B2C mode, it's a matter the the requirement is that you're going to have to get to traction before professional investors are going to fund you. Okay. And if that's not an option, if you do not have, and that takes time, it takes you know a lot of time, especially in a crowded market like this. And I, you know, you need to figure out how you're going to get to that traction. There's no strategy here of getting to that traction. Um, so this, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this business is not going to get funded. So you need to figure out either, you know, your, some, some of the options that you're considering of doing analytics. Social media analytics is a business that is working. We have a lot of companies in the social media analytics area. Um, the market, again, is very crowded. But if you can find an angle and a specific uh, niche in which you do that work, that may be yep. something that is immediately monetizable. That is a possibility. Yeah, I think that's the, one of the conversations that uh, we are having. So. Yeah, this this is not doable. I, I just don't think this is at all doable right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Gosh. That's a lot of slides. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Satish. Good luck with thank the you. next iteration of your business. Okay. Amir Nital is next. Uh, Rib, what is the company? Rivet Talent Solutions. Amir, if you could unmute your line and tell us what you're doing, that will be great. Sure. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> my, company, <clears throat> my company name is uh, Rivet Talent Solutions Private Limited. Uh, we are uh, primarily into a CRM analytic uh, domain. We are provide CRM installation services as of now. We are proposing this uh, as a product, which is a cloud computing product for uh, retail analytics, which will be a real-time retail analytics. Um, can you go to the second slide? Uh, so in, in short, it is a platform which will conduct uh, real-time analytics uh, for buyers uh, to have a deal which would be a combination or a combo deal which will be beneficial for the seller as well as the buyer. Uh, the, uh, the deal uh, offering applications are many in the market. The only differentiation factor what we will be offering is this would be a real-time analytics. But even that yes, has exactly. competition. Yes. Definitely. Um, the the market problem that we are identifying is uh, the seller has a problem to identify that what exactly any every individual who walks in a store or who walks in uh, to your website or e-commerce portal, what is he exactly looking for? So uh, what we are trying to do is uh, more of a data gathering of an individual and doing an analytics and a predictive uh, feature which would explain what the client is might be looking for for when he is walking into your store. Uh, next. So uh, if a person is uh, given any uh, uh, customized offer, then the person has a, uh, and it's a greater chance that he might buy it rather than a generic offer that he would get it. So if you walk into a store and yeah, you see that there is a 30% discount, uh, he might or might not look into it. But if he is given an offer that um, he is purchasing a camera, so along with the camera, he might get a camera stand with a 25% off. So you know that, that this person has been logging on to e-commerce uh, portals for looking into camera pages a lot. So that's a predictive analysis which would tell that this person has a higher probability of buying a camera. So you might as well have a deal offered to him that this is what a bundled deal he might get. 
uh, every person who walks in has some predefined notion that what he is going to buy. Uh, other aspects which he sees or other products which he sees and buys is an impulsive buy. But definitely he has some desire, some uh, product which he has thought of uh, for which he walks into a store or opens an e-commerce site. Um, yeah, the extension you expecting to tie into. Uh, I am coming to it uh, into next slides. Okay. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so the way we will uh, do is uh, this uh, rein application would be uh, through uh, primarily through all store chains. So for whatever purchases will happen will get into a backend database which will run the analytics uh, code or the model that we are developing. And this analysis with the seller along with the possible combination deals. So if let's say a uh, person has uh, the person has got a database that he is a prospective buyer for, he has bought milk uh, carton 50 days back and probably he has also bought uh, two crates of beer. So now he is walking into a store. So there is a high probability that he might need milk as well as beer. So probably we could combine that deal that if he buys three cartons of milk, he might get a 10% discount on beer. So just a wild example, but I'm just trying to put forward the logic. Yeah. And this we have a question in the public chat. How would you give that offer while in the store? Is that an SMS or an email? Uh, yes, uh, I have addressed that uh, point also in the next part, but it would be either an app or an, uh, uh, yeah, so, so this will be a, a platform where we would uh, we would not just uh, target a large chains or the hypermarkets, we would also target uh, portals and individuals so because you cannot, uh, you cannot know from where or uh, which way the person might buy. So you need to address all the uh, channels through which a person can possibly buy. Uh, next slide. Um, so this is a broad competition mapping. I have not mentioned major players into this, but there are big players uh, who have their, their own analytics platform. So that's, that's one challenge which we definitely are facing and which uh, we have not been able to address. How do we deal with that? And um, company, at the company level, uh, there is a uh, decision that happens that how this analytics should work. And also there is a gap in the company level analysis and a market level analysis. So that's what is the competition. Gap, gap in the company level analysis and market level analysis. That's your gap uh, or the gap in the market? Both. Uh, if if we are if we are providing it and if we do not get a company level database, uh, we will not be able to give a proper deals to the buyer who walks in. So and, how many uh, have you talked to? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed your question. How many retailers have you talked to? Uh, we are talking with uh, three retailers in India, mm -hmm. but. Uh, uh, primarily, what we are targeting is this uh, to have uh, the pilot work into a developed market. The reason being that tracking of the people or the tracking of the person's buying uh, behavior and buying habits is very difficult to trace in uh, market of India because the the primary um, one one base like social security number or your PAN number or mobile number, whatever. There has to be some base for through which we can track the consumer's buyers, buying patterns. So what we are uh, offering this solution is we are talking to Barnes & Nobles in US mm -hmm. and Amazon. So uh, a, a very simple example, if a person has bought uh, books from Barnes & Nobles, then we can uh, give them some perks from Amazon.com for for buying books which we know what is his buying taste and preferences. Yeah, but you know, I don't why are you talking to Amazon? Amazon's whole you know, they have they're really focused oh. on this kind of stuff. That's not the right penetration point. No, no, no. I'm I'm I was just giving an example of Barnes and Nobles and Amazon.com. I uh, 
Amazon dot com or Walmart or uh, uh, Tesco. These are these have uh, these people have their own analytics. They have their own uh, platforms developed. So okay. they they would definitely not. Uh, uh, I mean, we we do, do not stand anywhere in front of them. So this this will be something which will be, this will be mid-sized uh, retail chains which which will not uh, no we are we are not talked to anyone as of till now. So I'd like to hear from you know I'd like to have some feedback from real customers. You know you should not start building anything right now without engaging with real customers and talk, immersing yourself in real customers. Sure, sure, sure. Um, uh, I mean, you're, what you're saying is true, but it's not a new market, right? This has been happening, as you can see, that many yes. of them have their own internal solutions, and there are lots of products in this category as well. Retail analytics is a place where there is a number of companies that are playing very actively. If you look at my big data series that I've published in, uh, that I'm publishing on the blog, there is a variety mm -hmm. of companies that are addressing this kind of problem. So don't stumble into a, a market without really understanding the existing lay of the land. That would be a very yes, naive yes. way to get into a market. You need to yes. be very clear on exactly who are the players, what are they doing, and where is the opportunity. And I don't see any of that. Right now, this is a very 30,000 feet level kind of presentation, and you're expecting $3 million in U.S. cash investments, you must be kidding. No uh, one's no, I, I'm just $3 million cash investment based on nothing. No, uh, we, we have the detailed uh, uh, development platform and plan. Uh, I'll just put forward the next slide of uh, the breakdown not, of this. Oh, this is not how financing works. You you don't have a mm -hmm. single customer here. No one will write you a three million dollar check without a single customer, with no validation, nothing. That's just not yeah, how true. business works. You need to understand how the startup market works. Mm -hmm. These are just random numbers, pie in the sky kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. In you know the business startup business today requires that you have a validated business before anybody is going to write any check of any denomination. True, true, true. true. So, so why are you coming to me and saying you're looking for three million dollars with nothing? Yeah, so this is the, the that was the question which uh, we identified. Uh, um, there was a question in the chat that what uh, the previous slide the question is how you are going to identify the buyer. So that that was that is the whole uh, crux of the whole idea where we are uh, trying to analyze across uh, retail chains by buyer behavior how he is purchasing through different stores and he is walking into a different uh, third store. So what has he purchased previously is what we are uh, going to use it. We are not going to disclose it, but we are but going to use it. I think there are lots of fallacies in the way you're thinking about it, right? Because typically when we are, if we are, operate, if we are interacting with a chain, we tend to mm -hmm. go to the same location. Once in a while we may go to a different location, but more often than not, go to, like we have a Trader Joe's grocery store in, in, you know, about five minutes from my house. I'm not going to go mm -hmm. to a lot of other, there may be two Trader Joe's that I go to on a regular basis. Okay. So, so it's, you know, that the behavior pattern, behavior pattern of shopping tends to be fairly localized. Uh, right, but uh, uh, see, if you're if you're walking into a retail store and you're purchasing it, and uh, second day you are buying and through an e-commerce store, uh, these are absolutely two different uh, markets where you are you are a single buyer, but you are, you bought through two different markets. So, and I mean the whole idea what we are putting forward is we are integrating these two 
buying patterns. There's That's a lot of that already happening. If you look at, if you're trying to get into the U.S. market, this market, you're not just inventing this problem. This problem, there's no, no, no. a ton of solutions to this problem already happening. I think you should first order of business. You should go read the big data series on my blog. Okay. Problem we have discussed at length with various people. Okay. Sure. There, there's a bunch of players and retail, you know, this whole customer retail analytics is one of the biggest applications of big data. A number of big data companies are attacking this problem. And um, so it's like you're coming into a very, very crowded market with a very minimal understanding of the complexities of this problem and really not much customer relationships. So it's not clear to me how you're going to win in this market. And you need to give this very serious granular thought on how are you going to penetrate this market? What is the differentiator? And to come up with that, you need to first do a very, very thorough market analysis of who are the players, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Vivek, you're up Thank next. Thank you. Finch is the company. You're welcome. You can hear me now? Yes. Go ahead. Hi. Superb. Hi. Hi, everybody. This is Vivek uh, speaking live from New Delhi. It is getting a real little hot because of the onset of summers. <laughs> so to start with, uh, I will start with how New Finch was born. Uh, Shamana, so we, I, and my co-founder, four months ago, we were sitting together in a cafe. And uh, my earlier co-founder, my co-founder was earlier running a company which was into dance studio in Delhi. So her wife had to go for a press conference the next day, and she she uh, spent some four hours in the market searching, and she couldn't find the apparel that she was looking for. Uh, now this is no secret that ladies do have very specific uh, like preferences when it comes to apparel. What we found out was that there is nothing in India that is actually uh, showing them what is selling in offline stores. So you, you cannot really sit on the web and find out what is selling in offline stores. So we actually, the idea was born there on a coffee shop, and we went out testing this idea with the prototype, going to two markets. And what we did was we talked around 70, 80 retailers, and we told them that if you could uh, show your inventory online and get traffic driven, get customers driven to your stores offline, then how would that idea be? And uh, everybody was pretty enthusiastic about it, and we got around 70, 80 customers, paying customers as well who paid in advance that lured by our sales pitches. And we found out after a couple of months that it was not really driving traffic to their stores. So unless we were a brand and we had some significant traffic in this already into our uh, site, we could not really show them uh, the meat for their bank. So uh, that's when we pivoted, and uh, four months ago, we started with uh, aggregating online stores. So that's what New Pinch today uh, is in front of you right now. So we are in open beta stage right now, and what we do is uh, we help you find clothing and accessories which are out there uh, uh, in the online world right now. Our vision is actually to become the uh, discovery platform for apparel uh, in offline and online stores both. both. Uh, but yeah, right now we have started with online stores. So, in effect, if I can say the business model uh, is the aggregation business model for online stores and the listing business model for offline stores. And uh, what so we are. Aggregation business model, your affiliate fees is how you get paid? Yes, that's how we get paid, exactly. Okay. So, what we are trying to solve for the customers are uh, that uh, we can. Uh, please slide it to me. Yeah, so what we're trying to solve for the consumers is, uh, uh, sorry, the format has just got a little, uh, right. the format has just disturbed, got disturbed a bit. So the consumers today, they, even in India, although it's a nascent market, what they see when they go online is there is a host of, a uh, host of options. And specifically, uh, in markets like India, there are a lot of people who are buying for the first time and who are new buyers. So they find it confusing and sometimes after buying, they find out there was a better deal or maybe in terms of quality, they could have got a better deal online. So that's the problem that we are trying to solve, to break through the clutter and to give them a simple comparison search site, which would obviously have a lot of other things in place as well when they are searching. So we are banking on giving them 
the entire online uh, panel uh, catalog right now. And the search algorithm that we are building, that would be uh, giving them searches based on social recommendations, based on their previous uh, history and uh, delivery vendor reviews, delivery solution, how close is the vendor to them. And then uh, gradually, uh, three months down the line, we are also moving into offline stores, showing them offline stores. So the value proposition for the customer would be if you are sitting in your home and if you want to find out that, uh, suppose I like to buy a striped shirt, and you go onto the web and you type striped shirt, you will see that these are the three stores next to your, you in a market selling that striped shirt. And these are four online stores which have the kind of online, uh, the, the kind of striped shirt that you're looking for. So that's the value proposition for the consumer. And moving ahead, uh, the, right now what we're doing is uh, we are driving leads to the e-commerce layer and that's how the affiliation model works. You drive leads, you drive transactions to them and you get paid for it. So the biggest problem right now, Indian e-commerce industry is really under strain when it comes to margins. There are a whole lot of startups which have started. The market is not even uh, like close to mature. It's really in growth stage. Even still, they are feeling the pressure of the cost of acquiring the customer. So if I talk to Indian groups, are there right now online? Sorry. How many apparel stores are there online right now? Yeah, right now, if you talk of uh, bigger significant players, there are around 30, 35. If you talk about uh, I mean, startups and everything, included, there are more than 100 uh, online apparel stores in India. Okay. So all these stores, uh, the traffic that they get is, uh, so the problem right now is cost of acquiring customers. They are spending anywhere, when I talk about Indian rupees, they are spending anywhere, oh, I, I would be talking US dollars. Then. So they are spending anywhere close to 30 to 40 dollars uh, 30 to 40 dollars, uh, no, not exactly, sorry, 25 dollars, around 20 to 25 dollars in acquiring one customer, which is pretty high. Then the average ticket size is just 20 dollars. So how they do is, they actually amortize it over a period of two months, and that's how they show the cost of acquiring customer as still justified uh, in terms of spending 25, uh, 25 dollars. How many, so, how many users, uh, how many internet users are actually buying clothes online right now? Yeah, so right now in India, uh, users shopping online are around uh, 80, 80 million, and out of them, apparel shopping is done by around 20 to 25 million, if we talk of today. And it's rising by more than 50 to 60 percent every year. Every you, ticket size that 25 in. million people are actually buying apparel online? Yes, 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 they are in India. Okay. Yeah, average ticket size remains uh, closer to 18 to 20 dollars, and then uh, a total size and year-on-year -year growth is written here. So apparel category is really doing well because earlier the focus was on electronics, but now because uh, most of the e-commerce players are realizing that the margins lie there in apparel and developing their own private brands, so that's why a lot of focus is there in growing apparel brands online. Have you looked so at this thing called the Find.com? Uh, sorry, come again. Do you know this company called thefinds.com? Uh, no, I've not heard of it. You should look up thefinds.com. We have a case study on, on uh, my blog. That company does a very you know, elaborate job in the Western market uh, on apparel shopping. Okay, super. You so right now the models their, that... You should look at the way they do it, and there is very serious technology underneath. Because okay, one of the one of the issues with visual merchandising is if you're looking for striped shirts, what if the sh what if where you're when when you're searching, what if it's not tagged as a striped striped shirt? How are you going to find correct. that? Correct, correct. So right now, what we are banking on is the augmented search as well. So it is not just about tagging us, but also uh, closely resembling the image of the product. So users will also be able to do an image search as well. And as soon as Have they that type... Have uh, image search technology? Image matching technology? Yes, yes, we are developing that and we are pretty confident on delivering that because we we, we are right now in 50-60% there. Okay, so, so basically you are, what you're doing has been done before. You're doing a concept yes. arbitrage on this thefind.com and related concepts. So you should study very carefully how the find.com operates because that's essentially your business. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, another uh, uh, equivalent site that we found out and what we have followed since the very start is uh, shopzilla.com and bezo.com, which were exactly the same models and which became very big. Actually, they are subsidiaries of each other. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, right now, uh, if we see today, we are still in open beta, a lot of, uh, I mean, bugs and a lot of things to be done on UX, so we apologize there. Uh, but this is the traction that we're seeing right now, so around 1,200 to 1,400 units which on our site. We've just launched for five days ago. All these are from non-paid traffic just by uh, doing the various kinds of marketing that we are doing. So if you see week on week growth uh, for uh, the click to merchant has been uh, close to 31 percent. So click to merchant is actually how many are we diverting to the merchant. If we talk about transactions, we are doing around two to three transactions per day. And uh, we are tracking it in a embedded code which we have placed with these e-commerce guys, either directly or through ad networks which do cover a lot of sites. Uh, and the e-commerce companies that are that you are clicking through to, do they have affiliate programs set up? Yes, almost 90 to 95% of them have an affiliate program set up. It's in fact listed on most of the home pages of this. So have you started monetizing already then? Yes, yes, we've already monetized and we have already seen uh, transactions and money into our panel that, that is there because of embedded codes. Oh, excellent. Okay, so so basically, Pretty much you are in a position to be able to validate the entire chain. It's a matter of how long does it take for the market to adopt. Exactly. And uh, we are pretty uh, motivated by what we have seen in the last 40 days or so. And uh, because um, I and Ankur have been closely involved in online marketing in the last four months, so we have become uh, very confident there as well. So there are three, four different ways in which we are looking to market this product. Because uh, I think um, apart from conversion, getting the top line traffic is also one of the main concerns for any startup. So we are bootstrapping right now, but still, uh, uh, I will just talk about how we are going to market. So one of the ways in which uh, we are marketing is we are going to all the fashion bloggers and all the other influential bloggers in fashion and entertainment lifestyle space. So we tell them that uh, we have a tool looking widget where users can actually come and if you go on to this link, I'll just type the link. If you go onto this link, you can see our widget. Uh, this is basically uh, moving uh, dynamic uh, product search on Ufinch, which is open in a small window and which we are placing with uh, major fashion bloggers. So they are happy because their traffic is just seeing some nice looking products there and they can actually go onto the site and search for more products. Plus, uh, they, are, they can actually, uh, these bloggers, they can actually choose which keywords, which products which apparel to show to their customers. So if anybody is, say, blogging on ethnic wear, they can actually show just ethnic wear. Anybody is just blogging on shirts, they can just show shirts over there in that widget. So they, the they don't want anything from it. They just want to use, the, uh, use this widget to embellish their sites. No, they are getting paid for it as well. So that is the next point that I'm coming to. So they are actually, uh, they get an admin panel that they can log, log in and they can see how many visitors are landing on Newprint and how many are actually transacting. So for every transaction, we pay them uh, around 5 to 7% of the margin, which is uh, keeping a good, cool margin for ourselves and then passing on the rest to these bloggers. So they what are happy to place are you getting, What is the affiliate fee percentage, affiliate commission percentage for you? Uh, right now, we are a startup, so we are still negotiating hard on it, but we're still able to get around 15% on every transaction. So you get 15% and you, of which you're going to give half of that to these uh, to the publishers? Yeah, so this is one of the ways. Uh, we are getting uh, a half of them, sometimes 10%. If it's an influential blogger, he can negotiate for a little more as well. But that's uh, one of the strategies in which we've seen already our widget in uh, place on to see or more blogs related to fashion. And it's okay. really going viral as we see it. I'll just type the link to where everybody would be able to see uh, this widget uh, if they want to see Okay, what else? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, talking about uh, the other ways to market, we have also, uh, uh, I mean, we are also in the process of developing a create and earn tool where what you can do is you can go onto New Pinch as a user and you can actually drag a product from, say, tops and browsers and actually make a collage, cool looking collage, and it would be saved as your unique ID. 
now you can just share it on your social networking page or other sites or share it to your friends or mail it to them and if somebody clicks to your link and actually lands up and purchases on your page so we are going to offer money to these people as well so anybody can basically go and log in uh, to our site and make a collage and get paid for it so that's another uh, tool that we are going to use uh, to uh, benefit from viral marketing so how this works is uh, if you go into a site called polyworld.com or ninebrasa.com is already existing but nobody is really focusing on it okay yeah so and uh, another way by how we are going is we are going to add networks and we are telling them that uh, uh, you can place our widgets and our uh, our links on to different networks so because ad networks they actually uh, buffer on a transaction basis as well now the india in india primarily the problem is everybody is used to working on a click first cost model a cpc model rather than a click first transaction model mm -hmm. so there we are finding it a little difficult otherwise if it is uh, i mean we are getting some traction there but if we get to on to a click first transaction model then we can just pay uh, i mean after reducing our margin we can just pay for that lead further to the blogger and get some viral traffic from there i well. wouldn't worry about if you can just if there aren't that many bloggers actually in your category so if it's a matter of you know a few hundred bloggers you should work with them directly if you've figured out the model and if they're willing to work with you okay. on a cpa basis cost per action basis affiliate commission sharing basis um okay. i think that's that's a much better model and don't waste your time on ad networks okay okay perfect uh, we are actually uh, planning to do that in india but the cost for going global it would be really difficult to actually um, and talk to these bloggers on a large scale But you are doing this Indian for the Indian market. The there is no opportunity to do this in the Western market. It's already it's the American market at least is completely booked up. Okay, okay. Because for the online search, we can still offer some cool features and the search algorithm where people and users may find value. And that's the way to build a business. You should the way to build a business is not to do this, that, and and three other things. The way to build a business is build okay. one business. and do everything to make that business successful okay so Not you your advice is features to some other companies like that the the business you're in is a product shopping engine for the indian market in the in the apparel category that's your business correct so uh, your advice is uh, to focus on india big time right now and only then think you know just do india just do apparel and and tie up the entire vertical chain in india in apparel tie up all the bloggers around the space tie up all the merchants around the space so that you have you have relationships with every single part of the ecosystem and and okay. basically drive the whole you know ecosystem you be kind of sit on top of that ecosystem and drive traffic both through the bloggers and into the uh, commerce players Okay 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 fair point uh, right now talking uh, about the most look at is glam media that's an interesting uh, business in the fashion space glam media yeah okay so uh, you're talking about merchants although uh, glam media is an interesting case study for you to know about and to study but really the business you're doing is the find.com find.com okay. okay 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 perfect talking about uh, merchants what uh, we have done is right now we have a catalog of more than uh, 1.8 lakh products so in millions it's like 0.2 million mm -hmm. and we have covered around 70 e-commerce players uh, that means around 90% of the available catalog which is there in india you already covered it on the site already great and okay. or yeah and uh, when it comes to marketing side another side that is really focused is uh, the seo side so half of our traffic right now although the base is really small is coming through seo and it's really nicely indexed uh, and all the other uh, seo principles followed so we are rising on search every day yeah so search engine optimization is one of the primary ways that you're going to be acquiring traffic in this category okay, okay. and and that is so being tried and true strategy for customer acquisition for all of these product shopping engines okay super uh if we look at some of the key stats right now these are the total visitors so far in the last 40 or days these are the page views 
pages per widget is uh, I, this is what we've shown in the in lowest. Uh, there are some uh, sites which are saying uh, nine pages per widget. Google Analytics is saying around three. Uh, returning visitors are a fairly impressive 43%. Uh, average time spent is 3.2, and uh, then uh, around 15% of the users have spent more than 20 minutes on the site. Uh, Although uh, we just like made some UX changes 20 days ago, so before that it was in really really bad shape uh, user experience and design. The click-through rate is 3.32 percentage, which if you compare to competition is pretty impressive. If you look at Google Ads, it is somewhere around 3, uh, 2.5 to 3 percent. If you look at uh, Facebook, it is around 0.7 percent. If you look at Yahoo and uh, Bing, it's like less than 0.5 percent. The bounce rate on the site is slightly towards the higher side. We're trying to actually uh, just uh, improve some things there, so you will see it coming down in the days to come. Uh, this is the competition. Oops, uh, the, the graph has actually gone absolutely haywire, I think, uh, because uh, of the Ubuntu to Windows trans transformation of the slide. Uh, so basically, this is uh, the vertical line is actually absolutely 90 degree, and the horizontal line is again, uh, these are perpetually. Perpendicular to each other. So, uh, if you see our competition in India, my smart price, uh, newpinch.com, these are more or less price, discovery, price and product discovery. Then Google, Twitter, and OLX are uh, basically you can find anything classified size. Then uh, on the lower half of the the left hand side, lower half of the graph is Shopkeys, eBay, which are marketplaces where people can uh, go and list their product and sell it. And on the right hand side, uh, towards the bottom, is Jabong, Mintra. These are big e-commerce sites which are only selling. A Parallels and uh, and, and e-commerce selling, owning warehouses yes, and that is not a shopping engine in India. Yes, so New Pinch is the product shopping engine for apparels in India. Okay, then you have your positioning. Good. Okay. I think this uh, the opportunity is there. I, it's a question of how fast the market grows, and I think this in the next few years the e-commerce market and uh, correspondingly, the apparel, apparel market in India will grow because uh, what we saw in, in the United States is it took about uh, you know 10 years after e-commerce okay. took off for uh, apparel to really take off almost. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but I think okay. it, it's going to happen a little faster in India, but it is going to take a little bit of time. But it's already that that curve has already started moving. So. Yeah. Shamana, because another it's point where I wanted, on that top line. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, another point where I wanted your feedback was that uh, it's again a question of whether we should be bootstrapping for another six months or whether should we should be raising our money out in the market. Because right now we have started clocking money. I think in around five to seven thousand users, based on the current conversion rate, we would be more or less operationally break even if you leave aside the founder salary. So we can still like bootstrap for another. Four six months if we really like do it. But what is your suggestion if we go out there and raise funding and try to like grow quickly? Um, what is involved in growing quickly here? If you let's say if you were to raise some money right now, what, where Correct. how are you going to spend that money? Yeah, so most of that money would be spent on marketing and uh, making the product viral. And uh, right now the customer acquisition cost is very low. Because we are just doing, a, but after attaining a critical mass, we would have to spend money on marketing to get the new, next few users, and that's when the customer acquisition cost is going to go slightly higher. Do you higher. know exactly, but, like if you spend, uh, let's take an example. So, because one of the things you said earlier, which which I believe from my experience with product shopping engines, is that it, this is a category that relies heavily on organic search engine optimization. Absolutely. That's not something that requires a lot of money. Okay. Right? So my question yeah, is, and not... this is a question that you should work out to make that decision is, let's say you put in $10 into a marketing campaign. Sorry. What campaign would that be and what would be the ROI on that campaign? Okay. If you have okay. an answer to that, so... then I would go and raise money. Okay. Okay. So, so right now, dollars in marketing investment in X channel, you know whether that is Facebook pages or you know Google uh, PPC okay. or whatever is the customer acquisition um, investment that you will made. What 
you will make what what is going to be the impact of that if you put in ten dollars is it going to yield fifty dollars is it going to yield hundred dollars okay. is it going to yield twenty dollars how is the okay. what is that equation if you figure that out then i will okay. go raise money okay perfect uh, so if we talk about like figuring that equation right now right now since we are not really spending a huge amount of money or any money on getting that but what we have realized after talking to experts and after also seeing other campaigns in india talking to e-commerce experts closely is that there are some ways in which uh, we can drive good traffic uh, keeping our customer acquisition cost low and based on our experience in the last uh, two months also we can keep it at around ten dollars and uh, the average industry cost is around twenty dollars but uh, yeah you're right there that we actually need to spend some money do a actual pilot and maybe then come back so I, I think if you can, the the whole point. This is not a business. There there are few places where you may need money here. If image search is somewhat okay. difficult technology. So it also the, right. there's a question on like what is the status of that technology? How are you doing it? What do you need to make that technology mature? The user experience okay. of a visual merchandising user experiences need to be a lot nicer and a lot more compelling than these text-based user experiences. Okay, okay. So, uh, so that user experience is something that you need to pay attention to. But really, the big money is in marketing. And before okay. you go raise money, I would work out what is going to be that marketing strategy and where are you going to invest that money. So yes, I think the answer is because you are monetizing upfront right away as you're developing the you know business you are also uh, generate you're also uh, monetizing that's a very good place to be in and and I am fully supportive of all entrepreneurs who choose to bootstrap but you asked me what would be this is a category that is going to be a potentially a big category so at sooner or later you probably do want to raise money for this and what I'm giving you is, okay. may, even if you choose to bootstrap for the next six months, these are the questions I would try to answer at a very granular mm -hmm. level so that when you go have the financing discussion, you have answers to these questions. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, talking about tech uh, and proficiency, a little bit about new things. We have Sushant Drumka, who's actually a serial entrepreneur and who uh, actually sold India's third largest classified site after founding it in, a, in his college dorm, running it for three years. He sold it to American firm last year in a multi-million dollar week. So he's taking care of the tech, uh, tech and we're fairly confident about the technology part as well. Okay. All right. Good. So yeah. uh, good luck. I think you have a nice opportunity here and, and it's fairly crisply defined, that opportunity, which always makes it easier to execute on it. Defining the problem Thanks. with constraints is the best way to proceed. Folks, anybody okay, who wants to call in, please let us know in the public chat that you are calling in so that we know to call for you. And these are the, on your screen are the instructions on how to call in. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how to use the 1M1M program. And even before that, I'd like to request you, if you like what we are doing, please spread the word around. Please help bring 10 serious entrepreneurs into 1M1M so that we can help them in their entrepreneurial journey. And um, Maureen has given you the Facebook page. Um, 1M by 1M is the Facebook page. If you could please like us there, that would be wonderful. And um, here are the resources that you can access from uh, our website, uh, 1M by 1M.com. The first set of resources are the blog series and the Entrepreneur Journeys book series. The blog series is absolutely free, and there are tons of case studies. A lot of the case studies that I was just rattling off, the find.com, glam media, all these case studies are actually available on the blog. You can look them up there. Um, and then we started synthesizing the Entrepreneur Journeys series in a, a set of four books in about 2008. So the books were published between 2008 and 2010, and they're all available on Amazon, Kindle, and in India on Flipkart. Um, it's a selection of each of these volumes are a selection of 12 to 16 case studies and the analysis and synthesis of the lessons from each of those. 
we emphasize very heavily on bootstrapping and positioning. And, um, you know, really sharp positioning is the only way you can actually do successful bootstrapping. So, so those are kind of intertwined um, areas of expertise that you need to develop. Um, so it's, you know, this is just the beginning of the synthesis and the methodology that we have since built, and that really is fully manifested in the 1M1M one one Premium program, which I'll tell you about. Um, this is basically the blog. This is what it looks like, the blog and our site. Um, the free roundtables, these roundtables, as you know, today is our 168 sessions. So these roundtables have been going on forever. And um, I'm not sure what you're trying to say, uh, Vivek, just by sending me private messages. I would rather you don't do that because it's very distracting. Um, anyway, so we, we've been doing this for a long time. It's, it's every Thursday we do this uh, for entrepreneurs from all over the world. So you, no matter where you are, you could be in a village somewhere as long as you have Internet access. Not all villages have Internet access in every part of the world, unfortunately, quite yet. But, but we really have tried to democratize and um, kind of normalize this platform so that Really, anyone and any anyone anywhere can access as long as you have internet capabilities. Um, these free roundtables you can register to pitch and attend through the free roundtable uh, tab on the top left corner of the navigation bar on top. Um, you can also join the premium program. Let me tell you about what you get in the premium program. We give you extensive methodology guidance. And we have a very comprehensive curriculum that has been developed over the last couple of years. Actually, the, the material for the curriculum has been developed over the last seven years. The curriculum itself has been fully authored and stitched together in the last couple of years, but the material has been developed over the last six years. Um, we help you with business development depending on what market you're going into, where we have contacts. We introduce you to customers, potential channel partners, investors, media, analysts, all sorts of things. We have similar strategy consulting sessions, but members only private sessions in, inside the premium lounge. We have a lot of cloud in the media, so we uh, help you access that cloud. Uh, I'll talk about it in a minute. The Million Dollar Club on the website, you will find uh, there are lots of people that are already parts of the million dollar uh, milestone. They've hit the million dollar milestone who are in our program. Um, because we've now been around for a couple of years, we have had the opportunity to work with entrepreneurs who are hitting that milestone. This is the first year, actually, 2012 was the first year when we were able to hit that milestone. Um, then we have a lot of orientation material. You know, How do you use the program effectively? And if you use the program effectively, how do you get ROI out of it? So our ROI analysis, by the way, we encourage all entrepreneurs to do very um, you know, precise ROI analysis. So if you look at our ROI analysis, it is $375,000 plus equity that you save. That's the value that you get for a $1,000 annual membership fee. So it's a very, very high ROI program if you use the program the way it's designed to be used. Their value along so many different vectors, whether it's consulting, PR, uh, education, um, peer group, networking, all sorts of value vectors. And you will see the full analysis in this link that's on your screen. Um, we recommend that you use the 1M1M self-assessment. This kind of helps you calibrate your business and answer some of the questions that, especially if you're talking to investors, they will be asking you. So definitely assess where, where your gaps are by using this. It's actually freely available on the site. There are, where you have gaps, there are actually curriculum modules available as well, but those are accessible only for the premium members. The site, again, is 1mby1m.com. Um, there's lots of information about what you can expect from the premium program um, on the site. There are video FAQs that answer the commonly asked questions as well. 
In the curriculum, we have used case studies and video lectures to teach you all the subjects that we believe that you need to learn. And the way we have done that is, as you know, we have worked with thousands of entrepreneurs over the last several years. So 168 roundtables coaching so many entrepreneurs. We have a deep understanding of what your issues are. Like, for instance, the minute you spend a large number of, you know, weeks or months, in some cases years of your life, chasing investors before you're ready for investment is a complete wastage of time. Valuable, invaluable time of your life you're wasting without knowing what is the sequence and what is required in raising money. We don't want you to waste that kind of time. We want you to spend 50 hours using this curriculum where we have addressed all of these issues and we can teach you all the topics that you need to learn to be able to build your business, put one foot before the other. If you're going for financing, we teach you exactly what you need to pull together a financing round and we introduce you to investors if you are fundable. You know, we've tried to compress that period of your learning as much as possible. And we've been doing case study development for since 2006. So today we have the largest selection of case studies anywhere in the world. And there we have invited successful entrepreneurs to come and tell their stories and tell us how they have built their businesses and how they have put one foot before the other, how they have mitigated chicken and egg problems. And we have put together, synthesized all of these issues that we have seen that you guys face and the way these people, successful entrepreneurs, solve those issues. And we have triangulated those two bodies of work and created a video lectures and case studies based curriculum. You will find seven core modules in the core curriculum. Bootstrapping, positioning, market sizing, customer validation, financing, customer acquisition, and team building. You have to learn all seven of those to be successful in this game, in the startup game. Then we have a bunch of elective modules which are aligned to the specific business category in which you're working. Web 3.0 and e-commerce, cloud computing and business solutions, outsourcing and consulting, mobile and social apps, healthcare IT, online education, gaming. These are the categories in which we have elective modules and you will find domain specific guidance in each of those. Our methodology is lean, capital efficient, bootstrap startups. So if you choose to bootstrap, we are with you. We will always support you and encourage you and give you, you know, resources with which to bootstrap. For one of those resources is actually media coverage. You know, the most of the media actually does not cover you unless you have Funding. Funding announcements is the most popular category of coverage. So oftentimes, bootstrapping entrepreneurs find it very difficult to gain coverage, but we have a lot of clout in the media and a lot of syndicated columns and a lot of ways to get you visibility when we will be able to get you that visibility, make you known out there. And so that, that coverage and that reach that we provide you will also be very valuable in your business building process. We have an extensive social media uh, reach through Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, you know, my LinkedIn network is almost 14,000 people. I have something like 16,800 followers on Facebook. Um, Twitter is somewhere in the 7,800 kind of range. So we have a lot of um, reach into social media. The blog is 50,000 people. We have an email list that is, you know, something like 35,000 people right now. So um, we have a lot of ways of getting you out there, and we strongly encourage you to use those mechanisms of, you know, getting yourself out there because half the battle in startups is making your market know about you. You know, people cannot buy your products or services unless they know that you exist. So we un we understand and we acknowledge that and we make sure that you are very much in the consciousness of your market. And for those of you who are looking to be in the consciousness of investors, we help you in that as well. Our incubation radar and deal radar series are, are tracked by a lot of investors. And as premium members, you will have access to those series and being featured in those series.
Um, we do have an affiliate program for those of you who are you know, working on entrepreneurship development in different parts of the world. You can very easily partner with us. And then we have free roundtables every week. So these are, this is on, in April, every Thursday, we are doing roundtables. So this, you're going to have roundtables available every week. Please come. Please bring your friends. Spread the word around. Next week, in fact, we have a, a spotlight on Indian product entrepreneurs roundtable. Um, Vision India 2020 is actually one of my books that where I publish $45 billion business ideas. So if you're working on, if you do not have a business idea quite yet, you may want to take a look at that and, and you're welcome to take any of those ideas and implement it. I am doing one million by one million. I don't have the time to do more. Uh, and these are quite fleshed out ideas. So you'll get a lot of depth of uh, understanding of those problems and opportunity domains. Reminder, Startup Focus uh, applications are due on April 19th. If you are working on the SAP, uh, SAP HANA platform, SAP will be awarding 12 scholarships to 1M1M, but you need to send in your applications by April 19th. Okay, so that's it. And uh, if you want to dial in, please let us know in public chat and use these numbers to dial in, or you can ask your questions in, in just the public chat as well. Anybody? Questions, comments? No? If there are no questions, then we're going to wrap up. Uh, Irina, if you could please put in your information in the public chat, folks. If any of you want to talk to someone live about joining the 1M1M &1 Premium Program, feel free to talk to Irina. She's going to give you her contact information in the public chat. Skype and phone and email. Her Skype is Irina underscore Patterson. Our email is irina at 1mby1m.com. And Irina, you may want to put in your phone number as well. There we go. Phone number is 786-301-2456. All right. Looks like there are no other questions or comments. Um, we will see you next week. Same time, same place. And if you want to reserve a slot to actually pitch, please go through the uh, website and uh, register as wanting to pitch, and Maureen will schedule you. Thank you very much, everybody. Good luck with your businesses, and we look forward to seeing you back here shortly.